why people call percussion ensembles percussion groups? Stigma. You go. Um, this is hard. This All right, I'll keep going. I've got um, one. Okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> Pre-screening DVDs. Mm. That's good. That's good. You pre-screen. I don't. Oh, oh. Yeah, so pre-screen the DVDs. Um, I don't know if I can do one word. Put your best piece first. Good. You go. Um, graduate school auditions. Mm, fun. <laughs> um. Uh-oh. It's breaking out the grout. The late 18th century. <laughs> Um, it's a tough, you know tough what? one for me. I think Haydn is a complete hack. <laughs> I just opened this up, and I'm just going to go with it, because it's like, you know, if you guys know the grout, there's the Beethoven chapter, and then everything else. And the thing is, that I, there's, I don't like any Haydn. There are a couple of string quartets that are pretty hip, but really, the symphonies, I, I just don't dig them. It's kind of like a rock group that has a one-hit wonder, and they're mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. Capitol Records is paying them to do stuff, so they just do, it's like Linkin Park. It's funny, I'm a member of this recording forum, and this is no kidding, and this guy did an experiment where he took every Linkin Park song and put it in Pro Tools to look at the waveforms. They are all virtually identical. It like starts off with like the soft you know, beat stuff wow. behind and you know, the kind of lyrical singing stuff, mm -hmm. and then it's like, ah! And it's all like maxed out all the way across, and like every tune is exactly the same. Now, people who like Linkin Park, and I must admit that every now and then it gets me feeling good, and I can warm up to it because the tempos are really strong. But um, Haydn, I just can't stand it. And I've gotten in arguments with friends. That I have say, a tough oh, time with with that whole period, actually. And I, I mean, you know, who am I to say anything? But you like Beethoven, though. Eh, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything after that, basically. I'm way more into. I have a tough time with. Right before that, and bet you know, between there and Bach is where I just have a harder time with things. So I've, I'm a huge Beethoven fan, humongous, large hmm. Beethoven fan. I don't really like Brahms very What's, much. What, I don't either, and I think I just don't understand it enough because I've you know there's got to be obvious there's something there that I'm missing. I understand. What is it about Beethoven that you're just like, what you know? What I really like what about draws you to that about Beethoven is um, how crafty he was. You take something like the First Symphony. And it's in C major. This is the one after he's studying with Haydn because, you know, he couldn't study with Mozart. Imagine what that would have been like. <laughs> but he does this, and he starts off the first symphony in C major with five of four. And then it resolves to four, and then he goes five, seven, but then moves to six. And then he does five, seven of five, and then the first big, you know, for lack of a better word, hit that you get is the dominant. And you kind of stay on this pedal of dominant until you begin the exposition. And like the 19th century audience would have gotten that. You know, that would right, have been like right. listening to Keith Jarrett improvise or something. You know, yeah. it's like you never know. You kind of know what's going to happen, but what happens in there is really magical. And I just think that like that's Beethoven. Like mm -hmm. everything he did was just paved the way to right. open up. It's innovative. Everything. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like a linchpin guy. And I love it. And the um, John Elliott Gardner recordings have really changed my life a lot. Mm -hmm. Those, I think. I think they're the best recordings out there. They're just so furious yeah. and so passionate and yeah. um, so well done. And so I'd much prefer listening to those than like Cleveland or whatever else unless I just want to listen to Duff play timpani right. or right. something. But yeah. And that's really the only thing that I like about Brahms is the Zell recordings with Duff playing the opening of Brahms 1. Mm. The rest of it I could take or leave. Yeah. Maybe one movement from the Requiem. Maybe the piano concerto. Mm -hmm. or the, the D minor piano concerto but the rest of it's crap <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first ladies and gentlemen <laughs> so, so I'm just kind of building on this innovative thing um, you know both of us have done some things throughout our career that you know we've, that has maybe made us or, you know with the effort to try to make us a little unique or something that maybe not everyone has done in our position before and one of those things for you has been this recording thing mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about kind of because you just released by the way an incredible CD by the Florida State Percussion Ensemble um, not percussion group right we're still the ensemble <laughs> uh, a great CD with some great music on it and basically completely produced by this man sitting right here everything right 
I can't take all the credit. Um, one of my students, Hannah Neiman, was my assistant producer. Um, she came to us from St. Pete, and um, she had a lot of audio experience uh, and editing, editing experience. And so what happened was, when we first started on that particular end of the project, um, she was doing all my marking for me in mm -hmm. the control room. So right. I'm engineering, and when we were doing the pieces that didn't require a conductor, I was in the, the room, right. and we would mark the takes that we liked. But, but who stuff. did that, the engineering? I mean, who did, um, I did like the tracking and all, all of that? I did the tracking for part of it, and then what happened was for like Blake's piece and Skidmore and the stuff that needed a conductor, mm -hmm. she was tracking and marking. So I was in the studio with the talk back, and you know we'd go through whatever it was, and I would say, "All right, you know that sounded pretty good," and she'd say, "Yep, that was good up to this point. Right, let's try to do it again and pace." But and so it was great. And then what happened was, um, and I'm a very OCD, I don't trust anybody no, kind of person. No, well, I just don't trust anybody, <laughs> not when it comes to certain things. <laughs> I've gotten better about it, but um, by the time we got to the end of the project, um, I trusted her ears so much that I didn't even double check her cuts. I'd mm -hmm. just go in and say, oh, okay, this one is this one. I'd put it in, and sure enough, everything was great. So I really couldn't have done it without her. Yeah. Somebody's at your door. Yeah, I'm going to get to the door. Talk. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> we'll do it in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks. Continue. So, um... Anyway, so that that's how that came out, but it's been like a three-year learning curve. But there's a lot that goes into before you even do that, right? Before you get to the actual recording part of oh, you wow. investing and learning and well, and and, and and so where is it going now? I mean, now that you've got this, I mean, what do you see? What in that way do you want to be doing? You know, moving forward. Well, it started just as an experiment, um, just to think of you know, most percussion studios don't have their teaching space wired professionally. Right. Mo I, I think Dan Moore is probably the only one that does at that level. Um, so you have to do that. Right. right. So I just talked to the dean and said, you know, this is going to be great for the students. They can have all their lessons professionally recorded. They don't have to rely on Zoom or Adderall recorders. Uh, you know, which are fine for your practicing, but not right. so good for real recording stuff. So you're doing like recordings of lessons and editing stuff yeah. during lessons. Yeah. No, we don't edit it. Like for a lesson, you come in, I hit record, we go through everything, uh, and then at the end, I compress it to an MP3. Yeah. And all the students have flash drives, awesome. and they come in and take it out. So they have whole libraries yeah. of That's stuff. Great. And the beautiful thing for me is that I don't have to repeat myself. Um, I don't have to have them trust me when I say, do you hear the difference between my role and your role? Right. And they say yes, like you know, like whether they do or not yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And then they can go back and listen to it. But the other great thing is that in ensemble rehearsals, when we record those, which leading up to that PASIC concert, man, we recorded everything and posted it online and we're sending it to people to listen yeah, to. Yeah, I remember getting some stuff from you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just people whose ears I trusted and right. say, listen to this, do you hear what I hear? Yeah. And when you tell a student, you know, you're late or you're early and, you know, my students are very polite and very professional as are yours. And they say yes, but I can see the little balloon above their head that says, no, I'm not. <laughs> and then they it's listen the to the recording. Yes and the Yeah, they listen to the recording. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God, I yeah. am. And right. then the next time yeah. it's fixed and you never have to mention it again. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. And I think one of the things we talk about in the show, not directly necessarily, is just how technology is changing mm -hmm. to the point where we can do things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's a real practical use of a, you know, from a pedagogical standpoint. But being able to just make a whole CD and produce it and send it out, and not, not that it was cheap still, but... It was less expensive than probably it ever has been. Oh my God! I you mean, know, to and, go and if you and want to learn something like this, like you have, it's the information's there where you can do it. I did know, it so. when my wife was pregnant. Yeah. Um, I had insomnia for like three months, <laughs> and so what I did was I joined all these recordings. Should we forums. get to the source of that, or is that another show entirely? <laughs> well, no, we can say. I mean, there was a lot going on. <laughs> For those of you who keep score of things, this was fall of two thousand seven. The, the, the other, the other thing too is, well, what, what, what we've been hinting at this whole time, and even on the way here, you know, his, you know, Eva's wife, beautiful wife, pregnant oh, with she her is. second child, she is, and you know, there's always, you know, real life creeps in, and you know, I think in our circles we don't always, I mean, we talk when we're just hanging out over a beer or whatever, but you know, real life butts in all the time, and when you're, doesn't matter if you're a student or or a professional, you know. Um, You've got to always deal with difficulties, or you know something happens suddenly. And but anyway, I've experienced that many times 
Oh, yeah. Insomnia from those types of things. So I just stay up at night, and I, you know, read the BPA. They have a, a for those of you who are interested in this, they have a great thing called Microphone University. That's a, huh. basically a, a primer on microphone placement and types and different kind of stereo configurations and what mics to use and stuff like that. And FSU mostly uses DPA um, and Earthworks mics for all of our halls and, and all the other stuff. And so. I did that. Um, Indiana University has a great uh, computer music program and recording program, and you can find it online, and they have their textbook online. Yeah. So you can read about microphone patterns. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you, you want to know anything, it's out there. Yeah. So you I just, just read look for all this yeah, stuff. That's awesome. And I joined some forums with yeah. uh, a bunch of Nashville guys that do um, a lot of classical recording for Sony and mm -hmm. you know everybody else. And um, I just started asking some questions, and they said, this is what you need, this is what you need. So I took it to the assistant dean and um, said, hey, you know, all we need is a hole in the wall, right. and we can make this work. Right. And so I just started, awesome. and I mean, by now, and I'm not kidding, I've probably made 3,000 recordings of lessons, uh, grad school applications, uh, the CD that we did. And it's cool because each of the students, when they get, say, a marimba piece to a point where it's time to perform it, we go in and do a real recording session on it, and then they come out with something that sounds amazing that yeah, they can sure. use later or yeah. for a music festival or just to give to their parents and say, hey, you know, here's yeah. what I'm doing. And that's, it's been a really cool thing. Plus, they're learning how to use some of it, too. And I've just kept doing research, and, you know, for the next step, I, we'll probably do another CD in a year or two. Mm -hmm. And um, until then, you know, it's mostly just about making sure that the students' job applications sound as professional as possible. Yeah. And um, awesome. they, they do. So it's good. We have just a few minutes left. Is there something else we want to cover in a minute or two? I want to do some more word association. <laughs> um, <Should we? laughs> method of movement. Um, great for pictures. Agreed. Agreed. You know, the Especially when you're kicking that mallet out, you know, for big You know what? I just like to explain know? something. Give me a pair of mallets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grab some of those. I'm gonna say, are these the old TV <laughs> prototypes? Uh... Yes. Can I use these? Early, very early. For those of you who are like, it's a good thing we didn't go with this color. Ah! <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I've got to go on a diet. Good God. There you go. All right. Wait, wait. It's not. It's not. I, I just. I'm scared. There you go. All right. For those of you out there who have, the few of you who have ever seen me play marimba know that I'm kind of a Burton slash Mersh slash kind of player, you know, so there's that little hole in the middle and I can do whatever. But it's important for you to understand that Lee's book was a huge thing for me because when mm -hmm. I was an undergrad, I didn't know anything about Stevens Technique. I was so stupid that it wasn't until I was a sophomore and some freshmen came in and they're holding their mallets like this and I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's because I was an idiot. You know, I was a piano player. I didn't really know anything. So uh, when I was looking at grad schools and looking for assistantships, I remember I went to go see Bill Rice at James Madison because mm -hmm. they had this kick and drum line, and mm -hmm. I really liked Bill Rice a lot, and Tony Falcone was there. and I was really into marching band as well as you know orchestral stuff, and they just had a great program. So I went to audition there, and he was like, do you know how to play Steven's grip? And I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> and he goes, well, it would be important if you were a teaching assistant to be able to do it. And I thought, you're right. And so we were on band tour that spring, and I got method of movement, and I sat there with it's every right picture, there, everything you need. every picture, looking at Lee's hands mm -hmm. and figuring everything out. And I just like to show you that that is the proper way. <laughs> That's good. That, that, that to do is, it. Actually. That's the proper way. That's I'm not awesome. doing the claw. He's I'm not, uh, look, I'm not calling it. I can pop it in and out, in and out, in and out. There so for go. those of you who are naysayers who say you're going to pick one grip or whatever, I say pick them all, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and now's the time when you come up with question of the episode. Question you have to ask, it, just, do, just, just for on discussion. Um, uh, so what is it? What is it that you want to, and then I'll, you know, you can check out the responses. Oh my gosh. And um, by the way, as he's thinking that, we're going to move the chatter as much as we can to drumchatter.com. So if you guys wouldn't mind taking all your questions there or answering all your questions there in comments. You got a question? Um, I have a question. <laughs> okay, how about this? I don't, I gotta, you need to leave comments on how he can drop a few pounds. How's that? No, because that's just gonna <laughs> that's just gonna hurt my fragile sense of self-worth as it is. How about this? How about this? 
Um, I think what would be interesting, a question for all of you, if we were ever able to do another episode, what real topics would you like to hear us discuss other than <laughs> weight loss, guest artists, and how overrated Haydn was? Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Adios. <laughs>